everybody today I want to show you beginning to end how to knit your own ear flap beard hat all right here's a couple you can do them with the I cord chain or without and I'll show you how to do both ways here's two different hats I've made this one I did an eyelash yarn which that's what I'm going to be using in this video all right now these hats can be made in any size I'm Hope to be able to explain this well enough to that you could pick up any loom and mark the pegs to do this beard hat. Now, this red one was done on the 5 8 uh, youth hat loom with 41 pegs, which I will kind of hold this here for a minute. That way, after I'm done explaining everything, if you want to mark your own um, to do this hat, you'll be able to, and then you'll understand what all these pegs mean. Now, I'm actually working on another one using a 5 8 adult hat loom with 48 pegs, which, where's my beginning? Here we go. I'll hold this one. Can I zoom out any farther? No. Let me move this up so you can see all the pegs. That way if you want to pause and be able to use Mark this loom, you can. Which this is a 48 peg, 5 8 inch adult hat loom from Cindy Wood, of course. So there you go. Okay. Here's the loom we are using. I'm actually going to be using a half inch, 55 peg, small adult, youth large loom and I've already done one side but how we mark these looms is you're want to you're going to want to mark this will be kind of like this marks the middle of my front and this has an odd number of pegs on it so I don't have just one for the middle back here so I mark two which you want to take this peg and this peg and you're going to want to go all the way and mark two on this side. You're going to flip it over. Your starting peg and that second middle end peg, back peg or however you want to phrase that. And you'll do the same on this side. That is marking the center of the flap itself for both sides. And if you do your I cord, these are the two pegs that you use. Now you got to decide how wide you want these ear flaps. What I do is, there's so many different looms, so many ways to mark them. I'm not going to mark every loom. I'm just going to show you the concept and then you can mark your own. The way I do mine, if you look, it stops here. But this, where this is and where this is back here, this goes down farther. And that was actually a suggestion to make my hats to where they go down farther in the back because I started making these hats when my fiance worked for a cable company who was up on the telephone poles and he would get very, very cold. So he wanted something that would cover his neck up and cover his face. So that's the story behind the beard hats. So I do make it to where it does go down farther in the back. You want to get just a good idea of how wide, like this will be the front. This will be this front part right here, which you don't want it to come in so far that you're not going to be able to see out of it. So I just think of where my temples are, and then that's kind of where I put this peg. There's not really, I don't have an actual measurement or anything, but I mark the same on both sides. So for this one, coming from these two middle, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. On that seventh peg I marked, or if you're coming from your first one, it's one, two, three, four, five out, and then I mark. For this back side, now that we know how many are marked up here, you want to go in about half of that. So all together is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's eleven pegs in the middle. So back here, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's, it's less than, it's not half, but they do close in considerably more. So if you want to know from these two pegs here, it goes one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. That ninth peg on both sides, you mark it because that will be your stop point. So it's the ninth peg on this side, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and the seventh peg on this side. I, do, I go in at least two to three pegs farther on the back side than I do the front side, just depending on how farther you want it to come down in the back. If you want it to go down farther in the back, then you'll go in even farther. Okay, hopefully that hasn't confused you too much. I will hold this here for a minute and not move it if you want to pause and if you have this exact loom and you want to mark it yourself. Of course, all this will be wrote up in the PDF. Okay, to get started, I've already done one side. So I'm going to get started and show you how to do the second side. Zoom this in a bit. I'm not going to do an I chord at the end of this one, but I will show you how to do an I chord if you would like. You hold your yarn, you're going to wrap, kind of like a figure eight wrap, those two pegs, and it's called a figure eight. Let me undo that, because that's, I'll wrap it this way. You wrap it in a figure eight method. You just take your bottom loops, over the top, which the one will be the ending cord, so it'll pull out loose, so you can just tighten that right back up. If you're wanting to do an I chord, all you do is just repeat those steps until it's as long as you want. We're not doing an I chord for this one. So what we're gonna do is we're getting right into our increase, which it might be easier for you to see if I hold it this way. Typically I hold it the opposite way when I'm doing it myself. Okay, that's the tail. That's not the cord we wanna use. Get that out of the way. What I'm doing is the yarn's coming from the middle of both those pegs right now. So I'm going over one and I'm going to wrap this peg two times. And then I'm going to wrap, E wrap, E wrap. I'm going to go to this peg and I'm going to wrap it two times. I'm going to take that bottom over the top. I'm going to go back to this first one, take the bottom over the top. I do that and work my way into the middle. That way you don't end up with any like weird loops or anything on these ends. So that's your first row. Every other row you will increase like that. Your second row we are going to do a purl stitch. To do a purl stitch, working yarn below, your loom tool down through the top of the hook, top of the loop, pull the yarn up, take that off and put the new loop on. I'll show you again. Yeah. There we go. Loom tool down through the top of the loop, working yarn under, pull it up, take the old loop off. Oops. Put that new loop on, tighten it up. If you don't want that to happen, when you take it off, you put it on, put your finger there. All right, so this next row, we are going to increase. So we'll wrap that next peg out two times. Go over here, wrap this peg two times. Take the bottom loop over the top and then kind of tighten that a little bit and then work my way to the middle. Then I'll go over to this other side. That one will be a lot tighter and work your way to the middle. We're going to do this back and forth increasing and we'll come to this white peg over here first, which you will knit that peg. Then you will purl and then you'll just keep increasing until you get to this peg too, which I'll go over that in a little bit more. Okay, I just did the increase where I finally hit my first white peg, but I haven't hit that second one yet. I still got a couple pegs left on this side and I purled back. Now on this row, this is my E-wrap row, this is my increase row, but I'm not increasing past this white one. I stop there. I will just E-wrap. Actually, I'll sit these down, I can E-wrap it faster that way. E-wrap to that last peg and then increase one on this side. See, 
I will increase one on this side since I can't on the other side. Now I'll knit back to the middle. Well, that one doesn't have a second one on it since it wasn't an increase. And I will knit back to the middle. Then I will purl a row. And then I will increase to this peg. Purl a row, increase to this peg. Okay, at this point, we have increased all the way to both white pegs. Now your increase row is always going to be an E-wrap row. What you want to do is you want to purl back to that first peg and then you'll cut your yarn. You'll go over to the other side. Start with the middle increase out until it gets to both sides. And then don't cut the yarn on that side. I'll show you on this side. You have two choices at this point. You can either go into the full body of the hat or you can make the nape of the neck back here just a little bit longer. If you want to do that. You've ended on a purl row for each side. So what you're going to do is you're going to e-wrap. Go ahead and knit those off. At this point, if you're more comfortable, you can do an e-wrap cast on for this. I like the chain cast on. It's not loopy and it's not going to end up with pools and stuff in it. So you did that last stitch. Just pull that off there. Keep a hold of it. You don't want it to come loose. And then you're going to bring the loop around that white peg. Pull that tight. And you're going to start doing a chain cast on. Let me zoom in a little bit to get the rest of these strings out of the way. Okay. So what we just did is I went ahead and knit off those last two pegs. I took the loop off the last peg, wrapped it around the back with the, the string that's coming from the spool around the other side and pulled that working yarn through. I'll undo that and I'll show you again. So this right here was the loop that was on this peg. I took it off, put it behind, and kind of pulled that tight to put that, pull that working yarn through the loop. I'm going to go to that next peg, do the same. This is a chain cast on. I just, I like the way this cast on looks. That's why I'm using it. It just gives it a very finished edge. All right, now this last loop will go on that peg. So there's going to be two loops on this peg. Since the yarn's coming from in between, you can either skip and e-wrap those and just pull the bottom over the top. Or if you want that tied in a little tighter, you can actually wrap that peg and you'll pull these two over that top one. And that's what I'm going to do for this. So we will e-wrap. Just keep going. And then take that last one over. So that's all held in spot, held in place. At this point, you can do that same method and chain cast on this front part. And then just start working in the round with your garter stitch until the hat reaches the full length that you want. Which your garter stitch is what we've been doing. You e-wrap a row and purl row. That is the garter stitch. You can do it either way. For this one, I'm going to purl back. I prefer... It'll be, if I do it like that, I'll be running, I'll be working this way on the loom. I'm more comfortable working this way on the loom. So I'm going to 
take the bottoms over the tops of all of these e-wraps which this one you won't then I will purl all the way back to my first okay peg. so I purled all the way back to that first white peg on this side and again I'm going to chain from here to here which what I had done so the last one I taken it off the peg which you don't really have to do that I guess you can just pull the loop out and tighten it that's kind of a easier way to do it whatever you're more comfortable with okay so I've got my loop to do the chain cast on for this side and let me zoom that in because this side will be a little bigger you'll have more you want to tighten that previous stitch up because you don't want there to be kind of a gap there. Once you get that tightened up good, pull working yarn through. I'm doing the same thing I did on the back side. I'm doing a chain cast on here. Which if you're more comfortable with an e-wrap cast on you can do that but you will have like little loops hanging down and let me get this cast on done and I'll show you what this will look like. All right, into that first peg there. So I'm going to, wait, I got the yarn coming from the front. I don't want the, you don't want the yarn coming to the front. You want the yarn going to the back. And there we go. Okay, at this point, the rest of your hat is a garter stitch, which here's what that cast on looks like doing a chain cast on. The rest of this hat is a garter stitch. If you leave this right here and you e-wrap all the way around, e-wrap all the way around, purl all the way around, this is the front of your hat. You end up with a seam right there. You can see like I even tried like wrap an extra peg each e-wrap row and you still end up with this you want the front of the hat to be nice and symmetrical. You want it all to look like this. That seam, let me see, where's the seam on this one? See, here it is. We want the seam up the back. To do that, the easiest way is to cut the working yarn. Um, now we want this stuff to stay tight. So what I'm doing is I'm going to wrap like the next three pegs, that last peg, if you twist that loop backwards. Just let me zoom in, I can show you this too. Okay, so here's the yarn. It's coming from in between these two, so we're going to want to wrap this one. If you twist it backwards and have the yarn coming from under, it makes it to where it kind of locks it in. Do three to four. I'm going to do four just to get it over farther in the ear flap for when I'm weaving the ends in. So when you come up to this on your next row, which, sorry if that will focus, that one will have three on it. You're going to treat all these as just one and pull them both over. Okay, you zoom that out. At this point, you're going to tuck. We'll push everything down to the bottom. Get your working yarn. And then you're just going to start right here at the back, hold some of this under, and just e-wrap all the way around. Pull enough yarn out. Just do this real quick instead of cutting it out. Just e-wrap all the way around. Now I'm using a half inch gauge loom, which makes it a little more difficult to use a tensioner, which if you're Cindy Wood Tensioner is a little too thick to go through the pace comfortably. Just use a straw. A straw will work just fine. See, we're coming over this now. All these extra loops will be treating as one loop when we do this next row. And all this was purled before, so we're just e-wrapping over top of it, and that will be perfectly fine. It will match up. You just want to make sure you know where you leave off so you don't get two of the same rows together. I'll go ahead. Well, we want this coming from the middle. So this is the middle of the back. I've got it marked out just for this reason. I'm taking, I'm going to e-wrap a couple over. I'll do one more, why not? I'm gonna hold this yarn out front and hold that yarn out front too. 
just so that holds nice and tight for me. And then just go ahead and e-wrap all of that off first. Okay, that's all locked in. At this point, literally all you do is your garter stitch around. This will mark your starting and your starting end point. You know, you will this will be your end peg each row. This will be your start peg each row. So this row was e-wrapped, your next row will be purled, the next row will be e-wrapped, the next row will be purled until the hat gets to the length you want it to be. Now we are not doing um I'm not doing, I'm just doing a pull string, a pull string cast off variation instead of dealing with decreases. It'll have a little bit of a bulk at the top, but it's going to be perfectly fine. So go ahead, get it to the length you want. We'll cast off, we'll get it off the loom, and then I'll show right, you how to do it. Once your hat here. is as long as you want it to be, we got to cast off, finish off the hat, and then do the beard and add it. Um, then you add it after. Now, a lot of people ask how long you make the hat. I'm not giving you an amount of rows because you might want to use a different yarn. You might have a different tension. Typically, how I measure it is just with my hand. Uh, most hats, from the brim to the to the top here, uh, five to nine inches, depending on the size you need. I know that's a big difference. This one is five inches because this is a large youth hat. You can see how it's all coming together. And it's just a garter stitch. The reason I use the garter stitch for the whole hat is because it gives it a lot of uh, texture to it. And none of the, the ear flaps won't curl. If I do just one straight stitch, the ear flaps are going to curl. Then i got to block it. And that's just a lot of work I don't want to do. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> oh, by the way, I didn't even tell you. The yarn I used, it is, I think it's... Uh, it's unique is the name of the yarn. It's either, I want to say Burnett or, ooh, I'm not sure. I'll have to look and then make a note in the description of the exact type of yarn this is. I know it's called Unique and I love it just because it's got a nice feel to it and I like how it stripes. Okay, so to do our cast off from the hat, we're going to wrap the working yarn around the loom two and a half to three times. That should be good. Oh. Now I did where I had cut and started my yarn on the back end so I'd have the seam going up the back. Well, right here. I did switch one of these pegs from green to blue because I there's two green, two green, two green. Like, I kept looking, and if I seen the blue, I knew it, and I could just automatically stop. So, to me, it helped it go faster. You can mark your pegs however you want, though. Okay. So, for this cast off, I'm going to pull that whole tail through one peg. Pull it through the second peg. We're going to skip two pegs, wrap it behind it. Pull through another peg, pull through another peg, and then take two behind. We'll put the yarn behind the next two, then you're going to pull it through two, wrap it behind two, pull through behind two, all the way until you get back to all your right, blue I wrapped two pegs, went behind two pegs all the way around. Now this loom has an odd number of pegs. So the blue is the first peg I started on. Now I did these two, skip these, did these. I have one left over. I'm not going to wrap that and have three together because it would make a little bulkier spot. So I'm going to go behind it and then go behind the two that I already wrapped. If your loom has an even number of pegs and you end up just right there with it, then all you would do is miss, skip these two. And what I'm doing is I'm picking up every peg that I didn't wrap the first time, which will be two, skip two, be two, until I get here, and there'll just be one, because that's all that's left. Do that all the way around the loom, and then you take your loom tool, and you just take all the pegs off the loom. Once it's off the loom, this is what you're left with. So what you do now is, first thing we're going to do is we're going to close up the end. 
Now, if you are using a thinner yarn and you're running two strands together as one, what I would do would be like my last two rows, um, I would cut one of those strands and just run one strand to help thin out some of the bulk of the top. But the cast off I did will help take some of that bulk out as well. I, this is weird. You just pull the pull string, but you remember that yarn is going around two times. So you got to kind of pull it and you just got to be careful because you do not want to break your yarn. That is a huge pain in the butt to have to fix. So like I kind of pull on it and then I tighten it up. I pull on it until all the loops are gone from the top. Then you just pull this pull string down inside. Pull it all the way through and then you can tighten it up. Now this yarn is a little stronger than some of the other yarns but you still you have to be careful because you do not want to break the yarn off. See and there is the cast off edge. Now we got to work all these strands in. I take a crochet hook. We don't want this to go anywhere. So the yarn's coming from this side. I'm going to pick up a loop from this side. Start pulling it through. And there's so much of the string I'm working with. I'm cutting it off just so it's not as long. Now you, you make sure that's pulled as tight as you can without breaking it pull that tail through and then tighten it up again <clears throat> typically I don't like to do little knots but you want that in there you don't want it to go anywhere then you can just pick up a few stitches here and there just run this tail down some run the tail through and then you can <clears throat> cut the end this one I'll leave a little bit of a tail it doesn't need to be that long because it'll kind of wiggle and move around all right now we got this strand here where we cut the yarn so it's start going up the back so that way that's where the seam is this one you want to work it to where it's going up Which everybody has the way they like to weave their ends in. I'm just showing you a way. It's not the only way. It's probably not even the best way. But I just work it up to where it's out of the way some. Then you can kind of follow the stitches a bit. And just kind of weave it through a few. And then I always like to stretch it first before I cut the end and leave a little bit of a tail. See, we'll have the one over here as well, which you just do the same with. I was thinking there was, here it is. Now this one's on the front side and I kind of want it to match the rest of this, but it's at a spot where the loop goes around. So I'm going to pull the loop around and then start weaving it in through the back side some. And then just to kind of get it out of the way. Kind of follow the stitch a bit. Let's stretch all that. <clears throat> Cut that end off. These ends right here are already locked in, but I'm still going to weave them up this way just to get them out of the way before I cut them. That one's pretty much ready to cut. 
And I'll do the same with this side. And then we All are right, so we have the hat itself done. Now we need to do the beard, which the beard we're actually going to use this part of the loom. This is that front section. And we're going to start with one, two, three, four, with five pegs. I'm using eyelash yarn for the beard. You can use, I like to use either like homespun yarn just because of the texture of it, or eyelash yarn. Eyelash yarn looks a lot more realistic, but it's really up to you what you want to use. And since this is green, I thought a ginger beard would look good with it. So that's what we've got going on here. <laughs> All right, so you need to create a slip knot. We're going to do a chain cast on. And we're going to do it for between the two white pegs on the front. We're going to start in the middle. I don't want to do three. That would be kind of small. So we're going to do these five pegs right in the middle. And now it's a little harder to see what you're doing when you're messing with the eyelash yarn. Let me zoom this in some. But you're doing just a chain cast on like you'd done um, for like the brim part. So there's two, three, four, and five. Pull that tail down. We'll actually use the tail to help sew the whole beard in when we're done. All right, for the first round, We'll wrap that last peg and we'll e wrap the rest and then pull the bottom loops over the top loops. Oops, sorry. All right, that one's a little tight, so I'll go to this last one. Just move that way so you can see. Do that last one over and go back to that one. Let me zoom that back out now. Okay. At this point, you're doing the same thing. You're, go you're doing your garter stitch, and you're going to be increasing to both white pegs. And you're doing the increases exactly the same. So we're doing our purl stitch. It's just with using the eyelash yarn, it's all a little more textured and... Um, just the eyelash parts itself kind of want to get in the way but when you're done you'll take your hook and kind of brush through it and pull all that out and fluff it up okay so we did our first pearl row just like before we're wrapping once we're going to wrap it twice we're going to go back e-wrap 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 <laughs> And then we're going to e-wrap one extra one on this side. Take your bottom over your top. Kind of pull that one. Don't pull it super tight. Just pull the tension a little tighter than what it is. Alright, so we will purl this row. The next row we will increase one on each side. Then we'll purl. Then we'll increase one on each side. Then we'll purl. Then we'll increase one on each side. Go ahead and do that. Once you have e increased to the white pegs on both sides, you'll see it's shaping up. You'll have like a flat end and then it's just getting wider. Now, depending on how big your hat is, um, you may want to do a couple rows of your E-Wrap Pearl just as is without increasing anymore. I'm going to do two rows. I'm going to purl and then e-wrap back. That e-wrap back you wrap very loosely and take your bottom loops over the top and then we will do the mouth opening. Right, I did my two rows and I'm back on this side. I'm on a purl row. So what I'm going to do is those initial five that I cast on, I will cast off this round. I will show you how we're going to do that. So we're just going to purl. If, 
the purl stitch it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing here but I showed you before how to do the purl stitch okay we got one more and then we're going to be at that middle five which what we're going to do pull the yarn through the loop chain one okay find a better way to show this okay so I pulled the working yarn through up through the loop like I did for the other purl and I pulled the working yarn through again and made a loop let me show you on the next one okay sorry I'm trying to hold this still so I could show you so we're taking the hook down through the loop on the peg like we would if it was a purl here is this loop I'm pulling it up through all the way through so the loop is still on the peg the original one and here's what I just pulled through and I'm going to take my working yarn it's the same I'm doing a chain cast off is what I'm doing I'm just doing it to five pegs and then we will take the yarn off those pegs This is actually peg four. Pull the working yarn through. And sometimes this eyelash yarn will want to kind of mat to itself. All right, we'll do the five. That's the fifth one. And instead of chaining, we're just going to take that loop and put on that sixth peg then we will purl that six peg like normal with all the extra yarn on it it's going to be a little tight you go pull it off there there we go i can zoom out now oh wrong way all right so now we'll just purl the last ones like normal get to the end of the row Okay, so those middle five pegs we can safely take off now. Four and five. And they aren't going to unravel or anything. They've got a finished edge there. You can kind of see how it's shaping up now. I like to do the mouth opening. I think it makes it look a little more, a little more realistic, I suppose. Okay, now if you're using any other kind of yarn other than eyelash yarn, I would have you do a chain cast on for these pegs right here. But we're using eyelash yarn, so we're just going to e-wrap. Because the eyelash yarn, you're not going to notice the little loops or anything. So, and now you take all the bottom loops over the top. Now those middle ones, there won't be bottom loops, so you just leave it as is see there's no bomb loops for these five then we're going to go to this side we'll okay, pearl, so we the pearl the row and then we e-wrapped all the way back now we've got a little bit up here because we want some for like a little mustache type area so now we can actually do our cast off but i'm going to use just one strand of yarn the second strand you can cut but you want to cut it long enough that you can use it to sew the ends up and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do the crochet cast off just like I had done a moment ago but we're only doing it with one strand so it's gonna be a little easier so you pull the loop through and then pull it tight now I will put a link in the description of how to do the crochet cast off because I understand it's go it's hard to see exactly what I'm doing with the fuzz from the eyelash yarn in the way but i'll try to explain it you take your hook down through the loop the yarn on the peg pull the working yarn up through take the working yarn pull through that new loop 
and do, do one chain is what that's called. Alright, so you're going to do this all the way to the end. Sorry, it's very awkward for me to hold it up like this to where you can see to do it. So, do the chain cast off all, right, all the way to the last, last peg. You still go and pull the loop through. But instead of creating a new chain, you cut your working yarn. Typically, I only cut it like three or four inches. I want to cut it a bit, a bit more to use to sew the beard on. Oh, there we go. And you just pull that tail through, and that locks all that in place. So now, ooh, I did that cast off pretty tight. Okay. And here is our beard. If you want it to fluff up, you just kind of take your hook. You don't want to take it like this or like this. You want it kind of angled back. That will kind of help pull some of that yarn out so that it's a little fluffier. And if you don't want it, this is a very, very thick beard. If you don't want it quite as thick, just run one strand of eyelash with one strand of just a complimenting collar. That will just kind of blend in with it. So you see, we're just fluffing it up. And this is our beard for our hat. Now, uh, you might be looking at this and trying to figure out which side's the front. If you look on the back, this is a gradual increase all the way up. This side, it won't be. It'll be gradual, and then it'll kind of stop and then go straight. You can see that right there. All right, we're going to flip the hat inside out. And you've got to remember this goes towards the top. And this will be anchored in kind of. See where this starts going flat? We want the beard to end about here. So right before it goes flat, like right at that end, that's where we want the beard to anchor in. And then we'll sew it down to the very end there. I need a okay I can't find my small tapestry needle so I have this huge weaving one so we're gonna put you can use a crochet hook as well if you want but that's really up to you okay so here's this end and we're working with the hat inside out because what we're doing is we're just going to sew it and you're you want to make sure there's a bit of a flat spot down here you can feel the knot right on that end. You want to sew from this end, where the yarn's coming from, down to that knot. Now the yarn is coming from the opposite side for that other end for the opposite side. And we want the beard to be kind of behind, so we're going to sew it in like one stitch back. Alright, get it to stretch out right. Okay, and I try to hold it together. And I just pull through on there. And you can see how there's the front stitches and then there's kind of this back stitch. I'm hitting that back stitch. Uh, but it's really, you just sew it in until you like how it looks. Trying to keep track of the knot down here. It's right there. Because it's easy to stretch one or the other and get them to where they're not really matching up too well, that it's kind of pulling at it. And if this wasn't fuzzy yarn, I would probably be doing it a little different. And just because with the fuzzy yarn, you don't have to worry about your ends showing and stuff like that. Because it all just blends together. 
which is awesome. Okay, I'm gonna pull this yarn out a little bit more. And we're almost down to this end. All right, I'm trying to make sure I'm getting it on this back side and not bringing the yarn through because we don't want the fuzzy yarn coming through the ear flat part. Now these are awesome hats to make. You can get the bright orange yarn and do them for hunters because uh, that this fuzzy stuff keeps your face very very warm and you got the mouth opening if they want to drink or eat or anything while they've got the hat on okay i'm almost to the end make sure i'm not pulling it all the way through all right i'm at my last one pull it just right through that corner right through this corner now, I am going to knot this I did the loop back into the fuzzy because you're not going to see that I'm pulling the yarn through once I'm going to pull it through twice and I'm going to tighten it up I'm use my fingers to push the knot down as close to the working yarn as I can now be careful because if that knot slips some and tightens pulls all this tight then it is a huge pain in the butt to go back and fix all right so it is done which this is going to be this front side that's showing so i'm going to pull it through the back and then just kind of i'm going ahead and just weaving it in now which isn't hard to do at all you just you just pick strands and pull it through because with it being fuzzy nobody's going to notice oops stretch it out the point is just to make sure it's not right on the edge there see and that kind of gives the appearance that the beard is actually underneath the hat coming out all right so you're going to do the same for the opposite side which this side we can actually take and anchor it in at the bottom when just from the start which I'll just use a crochet hook to grab that so we can just anchor that in right there and then we know where we got it at the top because that's one thing that can be very 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 frustrating is if you're working on one of these if you don't get the top or bottom anchored in right then it sits a little lopsided on the head so that you want to make sure you do that's why I always do it like that stitch right at the bottom where it starts going flat so here's where it starts going flat so I'm going to pull it through the stitch right at the bottom of that and I've got this side you know kind of anchored in so that I don't have extra coming off the bottom when I'm done you're going to weave this side in exactly how I done that side you just kind of you're just sewing loops essentially I'm just picking up just one of the stitches kind of on the back side which your sides will look a little different but okay so I'll be picking up like that stitch like that stitch like that stitch just kind of like a little back from the edge but not too far I just don't want to use these edge ones when you weave it all the way down to this end yarn that you'd pulled in just to hold the spot I take tie a knot then just pull the yarn over this way and weave it in with the beard itself here we go this is what it looks like when it's done so you need to make sure you measure this one's for a large child hat so for like my nine-year-old this will fit her you see you got the mouth opening which is going to be right in the middle for the mouth and the beard will kind of go under the chin some but see how we sewed the beard in it makes it look like it's coming from behind the ear flap 
instead of being sewn to it. And we see how this one maybe I could have went down a little farther on the neck, but for my daughter it'll actually it'll go down farther on her because this is a a woman mannequin. It's not so much a uh, child one. There you go. All right. I do hope uh, the video was easy enough to follow. If you do have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Or you can email me personally. Uh, my email address is in the comment section below as well as the full PDF pattern for this hat with some different sizing options on it already marked out for you. If you do have a Cindy Wood loom or any other loom for that matter that you're not sure what pegs to mark, if you send me a picture of it or if you just tell me which loom it is, um, I can help you get it all marked out. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and have a wonderful day.